हरि ओम सहनावर्तु सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमाषावह ओ शांति श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा आलय करुणाल नमामि भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुन पुन समस्तजनकल्याणे निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओ श्री चिन्मय सद्गुवे नम Hari Om. We are in the study of Brahma Sutra Shankara Bhashya, Samanvaya Adhyaya, the first Adhyaya, and the three sutras that we have <coughs> tried to study: Atha Ataha, Brahma Jidnyasa, Janma Dhyasya, Yataha. शास्त्र योनिवाथ द्री सूत्रास द मेजर स्ट्रगल दैट इज हैपनिंग हियर द मेजर आर्ग्युमेंट्स एंड काउंटर आर्ग्युमेंट्स वाद प्रतिवाद इज हैपनिंग ऑन ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट और द फंडामेंटल कॉन्सेप्ट इन द फंडामेंटल कॉन्सेप्ट इज to achieve something there has to be an action in our routine life we see nothing is achieved without acting upon it you just sitting at one place and you got something no there has to be a channel of action and every channel of action which is perceived or not perceived if i am sitting quiet at one place and trying to um, be with my memories you cannot watch it you will not come to know that i am playing with my memories but for me the resultant effect is my mind is playing with the memories in other words a routine that can be set out for every jeeva is there is always a vichar thought preceding an action first is thought then there is an action the thought may be provoked by many things a thought may be provoked by an outer object a thought may be provoked by an inner memory a thought may be provoked by what has been experienced earlier called vasana sanskar and may project itself in the form of desire 
So that means there is a fuel that is brought in and put under a pot called mind. The pot itself is made up of the material that is conducive for boiling the content called thoughts. But the pot on its own shall not create any thought unless there is a fire underneath the pot brought in by the logs or the wood. The wood is the vasana and the lit part of the wood, that part of the wood which is burning is called the prarabdha. The prarabdha which is giving the flames to the pot, the flames are the vicharas or the desire. So you have unburnt part of the wood, the vasana or the sanchita, the burning part of the wood, prarabdha, the flames coming from the wood and directly hitting the mind, the pot of the mind, which are the desires. Once this heat is enough, then the, bot, the content of the mind start boiling and then the vapors start coming up. Those vapors are the thoughts. Because they are steam, they have pressure and power. They are able to perform something. And these vapors in the form of the thoughts, which technically are called vrittis, then they propel the karmendriyas to do something. This being the common story of all the thought processes, even if it is a thought about the God, or if it is a thought, thought about the Kama Vasana, the process remains the same. There is a mind, which is the pot. There is a thought that is produced there. And there is somebody who is watching the entire cooking process. The one who is watching the entire cooking process is the ahankar, ego. Because he appropriates entire cooking, including the utensil, the fuel, the cooked part, the eating, everything is appropriated by him as mind. He knows it is his thought. He knows it is his desire. He may not know that his desire is coming because of the vasanas which are prevailing in the current prarabdha. And out of these vasanas, whatever thoughts have come to his mind, which they lead to the fruition in the form of karma, that karma phala that comes or the karma that he does, he knows he is doing it. The phala, he knows he is enjoying it. And that is how this kitchen is on for births after births. Now, is it possible for me to imagine anything other than doing karma? Ask a very sincere question to oneself. Can I not do anything? Because I will not do anything is also a desire. Is it possible that we have stopped doing anything except in sleep? Deep sleep is the only avastha that we are aware of when there are no thoughts, there are no karmas, nothing is happening there. In fact, even I am not there.
But in the nidrist avastha, I have no awareness of whatsoever, and I'm in that avastha for a couple of hours. So being in a sleep and not aware of myself, that I am aware of. But being in jagrut avastha and not aware of myself, is it possible? I am aware, awake. I am in jagrut avastha, yet nothing is happening to me. It looks, it sounds impossible for us because if my eyes are open, naturally I will see something. In Jagrut Avastha, my Indriyas will not stop from sending the signals from outside. If there is a perfume around, I shall definitely come to know that, oh, there is a perfume. If I see a beautiful flowering tree or an innocent child playing, naturally my eyes will see that. So the Indriyas shall do their function when I am Jagruta. That cannot be sublated, that cannot be cancelled, that would always be there. And if that is there, then how can I be in the situation where I am aware of my surroundings because my Indriyas are working, but nothing is happening to me. This nothing happening to me is possible only when whatever impulses my Indriyas bring to me, I feel has nothing to do with me. And it happens every day. We go to the office. We are driving towards the office. And there are so many people, animals, trees on the road. We see them. We note them. That is how we drive. Otherwise, we will meet with an accident. So we see them. But we do not think about them. The presence of a person or a tree or, an, or a stone lying on the side of the road is noted by the Indriya called the I. However, it doesn't do anything to my mind in the form of receiving the input and up to receiving input is fine and reacting or responding to it. So whenever there is no reaction or a response, Such seeing is mere seeing, not the seeing the way we see. Now imagine someone who has adopted a technique whereby all his indriyas are giving him the input. The receiving part is there. But nothing is acted upon it to the extent that even they are not aware that it is being seen. the sensory inputs and the non-sensory input, non-sensory input in the form of memory, smruti, both do not create any impact on the observer in that situation because of lack of response or a reaction from the observer the possibility of thought generation comes to nil. In such situation, the seeing is invariably referred in Bhagavad Gita as Pashyate, Pashya. Bhagavan is again and again using this word, telling Arjuna also to Pashya. See without seeing. 
when this situation arises what will the world do to that man he is eating sleeping all right but nothing around him is creating any response or reaction from him simply because everything around fails to arouse any response in him but would that person be like a dead wood he is not that means even such a person also continues to do karma action this is exactly what bothers us or finds it difficult to understand you are doing an action and yet you say that you are not in the action if this is really true then the person should be doing a very clumsy action he is gone for bath and he doesn't know what to do he is sitting there that doesn't happen with these people in fact they do the karma in the most perfect manner gurudev after his first yajna and first few yajnas he used to himself close the envelopes of his speeches and post it while folding those speeches and putting it in the envelope he was so perfect at it now on one hand you say the karma that is be happening is happening without any creation of response or reaction but such people are doing the karma in the most perfect manner how do we reconcile these two opposites and the opposites are reconciled in a manner where the in automotive car <clears throat> is being driven there is a driver in the car but apart giving direction the driver is not doing anything the going function or is done by the car itself even the driving function which the driver is doing an expert driver is a mechanical thing he doesn't really look at the steering he just keeps doing it as if it happens through his hands it's a smooth ride the car is in the best possible condition going at the best possible speed being driven by a driver who is almost on an auto mode he doesn't really pay much attention yet he drives beautifully in the same manner a siddh or a yogi does the action or the karma till the time the car is there till the time the body is there in the most perfect manner without reacting or responding to the situation responding to the situation also doesn't happen from him because response also presupposes thinking in his case his thinking is no more there it happens automatically ahimsa a yogi or a siddha purusha a brahma jnani will not think about i should not be um, troubling this animal he doesn't have to think it automatically happens he will never and then we say non violence is his nature itself now on one hand such a person is seen doing karma yet he is not in the karma 
and that is where precisely these first three sutras have a very principal opponent advaita vedanta has a principal opponent here which is purva mimamsa purva mimamsa is of the opinion that vedas are the ultimate first of all all the shad darshanas they say nothing we say which is contrary to veda so first thing we need to understand that if veda says so it has to be it ought to be followed if veda is the only shastra by vyakhya or definition the only shastra available to mankind is veda veda is the source of all the questions that you have and veda is the final authority for interpretation of whatever questions galore in the mind this is what the darshanas believe the problem is not in agreeing about veda as the prime source of the knowledge the problem is about the interpretation of the vedas by different people in different man now this scripture itself is so intriguing that a diametrically opposite dvaita siddhanti like madhvacharya also feels that veda speaks of dvaita and an absolute monist kevala advaiti shankaracharya also feels that ved speaks of only advaita opposite thoughts are coming from the same scripture and mind well those who are interpreting the veda are not small people they are realized souls so they are the of the highest intelligence that being the case that being the case acharya in samanvaya adhikarana is taking first purva mimamsa as the first opponent he is going to go one by one after each of them each of the darshanas astik as well as nastik we are going to come across many 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 statements made by acharya in reference to the sutras basically trying to silence every other interpretative darshan and coming to the real or the only interpretation of the brahma sutra or the upanishad purva mimamsa being the closest acharya has taken the opponent number 1 as the purva mimamsa purva mimamsa means in short for our understanding karma kandi when we say karma kandi karma kand ved talks about karma in other words karma kand believers they believe that veda tells us to do karma so the purpose of human life as well as all life is to do the karma and we are destined for the karma without karma we cannot stay and they take reference to the sentences nahi kashchit kshanam api jato tishtat bhagavad gita says not even one moment can go without karma so they say look here also it is said that you have to do karma and as it is breathing is an karma till the time adhishthana is there in the 18th adhyay bhagwan says there are five things required for the karma of which adhishthana sharira is the first one because karma has to happen through a sadhana medium so this is a medium then which karma will happen depends on the prarabdha how it will how, what is the guarantee that if i do this if i drink water it will satiate my thirst if i eat it will satiate my hunger what is the guarantee because of the rule laid down by whom dev so dev is another component of karma
some action has to happen as an important constituent of the karma, perceptible or imperceptible, which is called chesta. So Bhagavan has written Karma Yoga, 18th Adhyaya speaks about karma only. That means karma is an essential part of anybody who is on the earth and who has taken a body, Dehadhari. If that is so, then the Veda being the ultimate scripture, Veda is only, only, only talking about doing karma. And right here, the Advaita Vedanti or the Shankaracharya says, yes, I agree, it talks about karma, but the Antima Sthana, Antima Phala, Antima station, the last Gantavya sthana, last station, the end of Purushartha, which is called Moksha, which is called Moksha, cannot be obtained by karma. Uruvami Mausak says, there are different types of karmas. You do it correctly, you will reach moksha. You don't require anything else. You require karma to reach moksha. In other words, Purva Mimausi says that if there is a statement, if at all you come across in the Veda which does not speak of karma, it is avantarvatya. For example, tattvam asi. According to Puro Mimasa, it is Avantar Vakya. According to Advaita Vedanta, Maha Vakya. Because Puro Mimasa said, Tattvam Asi, thou art that. Oh, it is not talking of any doing karma. So it's a useless statement. Superfluous statement. That which is referred by Puro Uttar Mimasa or Advaita Vedanta as Maha Vakya is considered as avantar vakya by purva mimamsa. See they are, how they are diametrically opposite. Why? It's not just a whim or a fancy. Jaimini Maharaj, Shabar Maharaj, Kumaril Bhatta Maharaj, these are not small people. They are stalwart rushis. With their superior intelligence, they have come forward in the support of Purva Mimausa. So, equally stalwart Vyasa Maharaj has come out with the opposition, duly interpreted in the strongest possible fashion by Adi Shankaracharya. So, it is a fight between, it is an argumentative fight between Purva Mimausa and Uttar Mimausa to settle once for all whether. Salvation, emancipation, moksha, mukti, brahmadnyana, atmadnyana, can it be obtained by karma or no karma? According to Advaita Siddhanta, no karma is required to attain that. According to Purumimausa, only and only karma leads to moksha. Now, whom to believe? That is the reason why the Brahma Sutra is trying to reinterpret. It is not a reinterpretation, it is trying to elucidate the Upanishadic statements to know its right purport or the right meaning. Would the Upanishadic statement like Tato Masi, Ya Brahmavit Brahmeva Bhavati, Brahma Apyeti in Brahadaradika Upanishad, whether these statement talk about karma or no karma. Because if it talks about karma, then I will have to do something. I am doing Upasana of Bhagavan Shri Ram. It's a karma. All Upasanas are karmas. So, I do, I behave in a better manner in the world for my Chitta Shuddhi. I don't do Papam or Adharma. I do Punyam or Dharma. 
आई विल फॉलो दी सत्य अहिंसा अपरिग्रह ब्रह्मचर्य अस्तेय ऑल दोज आई विल फॉलो सो दैट माय कर्माज डू नॉट बिकम निषिद्ध कर्मा आई शैल नॉट डू एनी निषिद्ध कर्मा आई विल कंटिन्यू टू डू माय नित्य एंड नैमित्तिक एज माय रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टूवर्ड्स द प्लेस आई एम बॉर्न एज अ सह जीवन एज डिस्क्राइब इन भगवदगीता एंड आई विल डू ओनली काम्य कर्म ऑफ द टाइप which shall give me the moksha for example i want moksha is a kamya karma i have a desire for moksha so i shall do everything that needs to be done for that and then i will get the moksha because nishiddha karma i am not doing so i will not be having any phalam for that nitya naimittik is anyway not giving any phalam so i am not doing any punyam but definitely i am avoiding papam prayaschit of my past karma i am doing by doing hari naam jap and everything so my past karmas are phalas are gone all my sanchit will be destroyed by hari naam no new fruits will be created because i am not doing any nishiddha karma then what will remain kamya karma if my kamya karma is talking about swarga prapti and all that i will get that if i am talking about moksha i'll get that and at the end what is that i want i want to stay continuously in a happy state where there is no iota of sorrow at all and i want to remain in that state for ever till the time is there which is called brahma pada the time and the place space and the time or the place where i will not grow old in kathopanishada the description is given of the people who reach this stage they never grow old they are always in yavana they are young there is only happiness around only happiness there is no sorrow at all that is swarga sukha if i reach there what else is required nothing is required पूर्व मीमांसा सेड दैट यू आर नाउ मुमुक्ष एंड यू गॉट द मोक्ष वाय यू गॉट आउट ऑफ ऑल दो बंधन विच ब्रॉट यू हियर एंड मेक यू सफर फ्रॉम द दुख बिकॉज यू आर नॉट डूइंग एनीथिंग दैट विल ब्रिंग दुख यू आर डिस्ट्रॉइंग यूर ओल्ड थिंग्स विच माइट ब्रिंग दुख सो संचित इज डिस्ट्रॉइड प्रारब्ध यू आर ऑलरेडी हैविंग भोग नो न्यू कर्म फलाज यू आर क्रिएटिंग यू आर डन and to support this they come back to vedan they say that look they are talking about yajna mantra devata stuti all this is talking about amna yasya kriya arthatva everywhere there is an action that is prescribed in veda so it is the action that leads to moksha karma that leads to moksha that means karma is the only medium to get the mukti the advaita siddhanta comes forward and says that it is not so mukti has nothing to do with the karma in fact as long as karma is there there is no possibility of having mukti पूर्व मे मौसा से ब्रह्मज्ञान 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 मीन्स वॉट ब्रह्मज्ञान इज ए स्टेट टू बी अचीव वेर देर इज ओनली हैपीनेस नो सॉरो एट ऑल नो डिस्ट्रक्शन नो डेथ नो सॉरो दैट इज ब्रह्मज्ञान फॉर विच यू विल हैव टू एक्ट सिलेक्ट यूअर एक्शन डू प्यूरिफाइड एक्शन एंड रीच देर advaita vedanta says first of all brahma gnana has nothing to do with karma in fact when karma ceases brahma gnana dawns one that means at the time of brahma gnana there is no iota of karma left anywhere first part 
second part is you are talking of absence of sorrow and presence of only happiness brahmatnyan is a state where either of them are absent in purva mimosa you are talking about the life indefinitely long brahmatnyan in uttar mimosa or advaita siddhanta says that there is no question of long and short because time is not existing then purva mimosa says what kind of state are you talking about there is no happiness there is no sorrow there is no time what is the point advaita vedanta says that is the point purva mimosa is asking show me where it is written advaita vedanta is asking purva mimosa you show where it is written and that is why the statements written in upanishada the last or the later part of veda called vedanta are the major bone of contention between purva and uttar mimamsa up to brahman samhita and part of aranyaka purva mimamsa have everything to show look here they are talking about in the devata stuti rudra you look at the rudra maharudra look at the nasadiya sukta look at this sukta look at purusha sukta look at this mandala everything is talking of action 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 karma 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 advaita vedanta says look at the last part that is the gist part dnana kanda you are focusing on karma kanda let us go to the dnana kanda that is where it is written that brahma dnana is not a karma Puru Mimosa is not going to keep quiet. They said, "Okay, let us fight about it. Show me which statements you are talking about, and I will show and prove that it is for the karma." And that is why Upanishadic utterances or the statements of Upanishadha do they indicate karma or they do not indicate karma is the bone of contention between the two, and that is the reason why. acharya has given the explanation on brahma sutra written specifically for this purpose of deciphering the upanishads as the exact purpose of it acharya says first try to understand this is meant for brahma jignasa not dharma jignasa because dharma jignasa means to do something or not to do something so it is pravrutti par dharma jignasa is pravrutti par do this don't do this vidhi nishedha so the first thing acharya has clarified is that no brahma jignasa is different than dharma jignasa so don't try to mix it up do not try to mix it up further i will be explaining but don't try to mix up because that is dharma jignasa you are employing dharma jignasa for brahma jignasa dharma is different brahma is different through dharma charana you may become eligible for brahma jignasa that is agreed acharya has no objection about it but dharma and brahma cannot be equated while the purva mimamsa says that brahma what they are talking about and dharma they are one and the same once you do all dharma anushthana you have reached the goal uttar mimamsa or advaita siddhanta or acharya says even after doing the dharma charana that alone is not enough purva mimamsa says look satyam vada dharmam chara it is all said already what more is required look at the bhagavad gita it's talking about dharma धर्मो रक्षति रक्षत महाभारत कनाद ऋषि जेमिनी ऋषि व्यास महर्षि ऑल आर टॉकिंग अबाउट धर्म दी उत्तर मेमासी पीपल सेज दैट इफ दैट इज सो 
देन द चरम श्लोक भगवद गीता से सर्व धर्मांपरित्यज्य वाय द लॉर्ड इज सेंग दट इवन लीव धर्म मामेकम शरणम व्रज दैट मीन्स देर इज समथिंग बियॉन्ड धर्म दैट इज वॉट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इज वॉट अद्वैत विदंती से सो आचार्य इज सेंग एज पर ब्रह्म सूत्र ब्रह्म जिज्ञासा फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज डिफरंट दैन धर्म जिज्ञासा सेकेंड दे से दैट everything has emanated from brahma so this is the only and the only and the only reality this is to completely diffuse the doubts in the mind that there could be two brahma there could be a superior brahma and inferior brahma par brahma apar brahma kshetra kshetrajna and purushottama this differentiation might bring to mind a situation where we may feel that brahma is of different grades which is not janma adi yasya yataha janma means the creation that you see is from brahma other than creation what is there in the world again the i use the word world creation itself is world other than the creation can there be anything else creation is one of shoot of that ultimate reality whose non creation part is not known to us creation is that of shoot of the reality of which non creative part or non creation part is not known to us why because first of all it is not a part thing it is not savayava so in the creation of shoot the best in the creation still cannot equate the ultimate reality the best of the finger cannot mean the best of the whole body because finger is an offshoot of the body creation is an offshoot of the body whose best thing could be swarga sukham yet it is an offshoot or a part ang of the angi of the whole so जन्म आदि यस्य यतः दैट मीन्स द क्रिएशन सर्ग इज फ्रॉम हिम द अल्टीमेट फ्रॉम इट द रियालिटी अबाउट विच ब्रह्म इज स्पीकिंग थर्ड शास्त्र योनित्वात हाउ डू यू से सो वाई डू यू से सो वॉट इज द गैरंटी ऑफ वॉट यू आर सेंग हाउ कैन आई एसरटन दैट वॉट यू आर सेंग इज ट्रू शास्त्र युनित्वात दैट इज बिकॉज द मदर ऑफ द शास्त्र पॉसिबल फॉर यू हाइएस्ट शास्त्र इन दिस वर्ल्ड द ओनली स्क्रिप्चर दैट कंप्लीटली बिफिट्स इन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ शास्त्र इज वेद बिकॉज इट इज श्रुति स्मृति कॉम्पेंडियम इज डिराइव फ्रॉम द श्रुति टू हेल्प अंडरस्टैंड द श्रुति but the status given to the shruti is not given to anything else because it is written or it is composed with that purity which is beyond human intellect so it is termed as a purusheya so the shastra has emanated from the ultimate reality called brahma one and two how do i know because i am in the creation i am in the offshoot called finger and i want to know the whole body is it technically possible or impossible it is possible it is possible because in this creation when you are in the creation there is something called shastra which is in, called as shruti or veda if you are able to study shruti or veda then you will be able to enter into the whole body and ascertain the whole body not only ascertain you will know that you are the whole body so 
वेद और श्रुति इज बॉर्न आउट ऑफ रियालिटी ब्रह्मा एंड वेद इज द योनी फॉर द ब्रह्म दैट मीन्स फ्रॉम शास्त्र ओनली द ब्रह्म कैन बी अंडरस्टूड बोथ वेज शास्त्र योनी थ्वात कैन बी इंटरप्रिटेड वेद हैज कम फ्रॉम ब्रह्म फॉर द अल्टीमेट रियालिटी और वेद वेन स्टडीड प्रॉपरली गिवज राइज टू ब्रह्म ज्ञान बोथ वेज After these three statements, the karma yogis are not karma kandis are not going to keep quiet. So, Purve Mimamsa are saying that no, 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 no. All these two, these statements which you are interpreting as not correct. Why would there be a statement like Tato Masi? Why would be there is Sadaiva Somya Agreyasit, Saparigat Chukram Asnavaran Avranam? Why, why those statements are there? The Purve Mimamsa is asking. And the answer given by Vyasa Maharshi is the fourth sutra, which says that to summon Vaya. Advaita Vedanta is telling to Puromi Mausak that look, I am not denying what you are saying. I am only refuting your end result. What is spoken about karma? I agree that that it speaks about yajna. Everything agreed, but your contention that that will lead to brahmadhyana is not correct is what I am saying because because tat tu samanvayat. Tat means what? Tat means tasya sastrasya or shruti. Tu means but that. Shruti or that Veda, but the Veda is for Samanvaya. That is why this Adhikaran is called Samanvaya Adhikaran. Samanvaya means what? Samanvaya is harmony of the Shruti is the purport. These statements which are given is for the harmonization of. The Shruti or the Veda to indicate and know the ultimate reality. The poor Vimasak says, "I have not understood. Explain me properly." And the explanation of Shankaracharya starts because Badra and Rushi has written only this much, and he has gone ahead because he is Sutrakar. But Sutra Bhashya Kruto, Shankaracharya is now Bhashya doing. तद ब्रह्म सर्वज्ञम सर्वशक्ति जगत उत्पत्ति स्थिति लय कारण वेदांत शास्त्र अवगम्यते दिस ब्रह्म विच इज ओमनी शायंट एंड ओमनी प्रोटेंट विच इज द कॉज ऑफ उत्पत्ति स्थिति एंड लय इज ओनली नोन बाय श्रुति इन अदर वर्ड्स वेदाज आर दी ओनली वे टू नो दिस नेचुरली एन अमेरिकन वीड कम एंड से दैट वाई द हेल यू से दैट युअर बुक इज द ओनली बुक आवर बुक इज ऑल्सो द बुक फॉर टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेम we also have a holy book and that's right anybody can object why are you giving so much importance to veda tat brahma sarvadnam sarva shakti jagat utpatti sthiti laya karanam vedanta shastrat avagamyate why not bible shastrat avagamyate yes there can be a counter argument like that that is why acharya himself is putting a question katham why how and then he is answering समन्वयात, बिकॉज ऑफ द समन्वय बिकॉज ऑफ द परपोर्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द नैचुरल सक्सेशन दैट इज गिवन तात्पर्य दैट इज गिवन देन आचार्य सेज लुक एट दी वेदांत वाक्याज वेदांत वाक्याज आर लाइक इन छंदोग्य उपनिषद There is a statement which is Chandogi is part of Veda only. So Vedas are saying Sadaiva Somya Idam Agra Asit Ekameva Dvitiyam. This is a statement in Chandogi Upanishad. Somya, some young man, Somya, hey Somya. This universe before existence was existence itself. what is the statement this universe before the existence of the universe was existence itself 
सत एव इदम अग्र आसित सो फर्स्ट थिंग दैट द वेदा इज सेइंग इज दैट समथिंग कैन नॉट कम आउट ऑफ नथिंग देयर आर सम थॉट प्रोसेसेस लाइक बुद्ध धर्म व्हिच सेज एवरीथिंग हैज इमेनेटेड फ्रॉम नथिंग शून्यवाद ultimate reality is void nothing then what about all these things that i see yes all these things have come from nothing where the diametrically opposes it and says that no before the existence of the universe only existence was there that means something has come from something not nothing now this one this statement which is talking thinking about presence of something before the creation because we are part of the creation other than creation we don't know anything but if it is possible to know what was there before creation or what shall be there after the creation when the creation will not be there or was not there creation was not there or creation will not be there what would be there would be existence that means there will be some satta sat satta is the influence of present sat has satta existence alone now howsoever you may try you will not be able to comprehend intellectually what existence means because we are only used to existence of existence of a car existence of a man existence of a tree existence of a mountain only existence the mind gets blocked what is only existence in last 20 years in in adhyatma we have been always dangling with the word sat chit ananda sat chit ananda sat means existence but what try imagining it try imagining existence you cannot imagine existence unless existence is added with of think think about existence you cannot think can you you cannot why human intellect cannot grapple with the concept of astitva existence alone see buddhi is tuned for nam roop so unless nam roopatmak thing is there you cannot what is the logical corollary of it if you have to know the existence you will have to go beyond nam roop you will have to scratch the off existence of of you will have to drop and the process of dropping the off is nothing else but the shastra and that existence is being pointed out by one utterance of one rushi in chandogya upanishad while directing to a person called somya sadeva somya idam agre asit ekameva dvitiyam because you may also think that that existence is it one or many currently that existence is there after some time another existence will be coming why this doubt comes to the mind because in our created world universe we have this kind of succession brahma was there then indra came then he became then shiva came we are used to officiating people again and again authorities again and again is something like that the sat and the satta of the sat is of that type or no to alleviate that doubt word added is ekameva advitiyam because first of all we don't know brahma 
what is the guarantee that while after realizing brahma we come to know that oh this is a different brahma than what the shaunak rushi realized he it's like a person from a village hasn't ever heard of america so somebody told him that there is an american president there so he may feel that there may be many presidents because he has not seen it he hasn't been there only to alleviate to to remove that doubt ekam eva dvitiyam so that means one statement is pointing towards the astitva or the existence so the utterances in the upanishadas are to be taken as a proper purport samanvaya acharya is telling now to purva mimamsa hey karmakandi please listen to me these statements are not avantara vakya this statement is not talking of any action where is the kriya in this where is the yajna in this sadaiva saumya agre asit in this statement how will you say that there is a karma involved here but pro mimamsaks are not agreeing to that they say these statements are then useless statements either the statement in veda has to be for karma or it is supporting or it is for upasana so the puru mimamsak says that sadaiva saumya agre asit means it is talking about something in front for upasana acharya says it is not for upasana brahma is not upasya it's a very important concept brahma is not upasya why not upasya because upasana or any karma is to obtain a phal you do upasana you will get something you do shuddha karma you will get punya you get nishiddha karma you will get papam every karma has to have phala that is the fundamental principle if brahma is upasya then brahma is a phalam acharya says no brahma is not a phalam brahma is ever available avastha that which is already present cannot be obtained see the subtle difference that which is already present that which is not present you pray for you do karma for the phalam because phalam is anagata yet to come adrushta it is called ya yeah, apurva apurva means it is not existing swarga sukha for you and me is not existing right now so we will do jyotishtom or some yajna or kariri yag or whatever some yag to get swarga because it is not yet there if already swarga is there why will you do karma acharya says that is what i am saying brahma is already existing you are the brahma so it cannot be obtained by karma the important argument and a very solid argument put up by acharya is nitya siddha vastu cannot be a subject to karma and upasana is a karma so you cannot do upasana for brahma so brahma is not upasya now acharya what he is trying to do he is trying to explain that the upanishadic statements as a part of the shruti are not meant for karma but they are meant for brahma siddhi and for that you will have to interpret these statements in a proper manner so that you get the correct meaning out of it and that is the reason why tat shruti tu but samanvayat so shruti is to be interpreted in a harmonious manner so that the right purport of the shruti is obtained is the fourth statement or the fourth sutra of samanvaya adhikarana there are again arguments in this purva mimamsa are not going to take it lightly and in the arguments and the counter arguments vada and prativada of purva mimamsa and the uttar mimamsa 
we shall be enriching ourselves with the fundamental aspects of brahma prapti the whole purpose of brahma sutra and brahma sutra bhashya of shankara shankara acharya is to gain the momentum in the sadhana for people like us by understanding both the aspects so that we are very clear when we are entering into the sadhana if at all to know the real purpose behind each act it doesn't tell us about abandoning the worshiping or the puja or the hari naam or the murti puja or the nirguna nirakar puja or the nirguna sakar puja or nirguna nirakar puja whatever it is all these are upasanas so karma and upasana upasana is also karma both of which karma is for chitta shuddhi upasana is for vikshepa nivrutti and only after chitta shuddhi and vikshepa nivrutti there is still a stage beyond purva mimamsak says at the upasana level the stage is over one becomes moksha prapt while the advaita vedanta says after this after this means ath atah brahma jignyasa that is where the journey of brahmatnyam starts so the end point of the purva mimamsak is the beginning point of the uttar mimamsak yet the uttar mimamsak says that the beginning is must but it is not the end purva mimamsak says our beginning itself is at the end what are the further arguments in reference to the other upanishads would be the part of the next session hari om om पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णम् उदच्छते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि हि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि हि ओम Hari Om. We'll wait for some questions. Yeah. Hari Om Sanjay Ji. Yeah, I think he's going. Yeah. Hari Om Sanjay Ji. Uh, I don't know why Purva Mama Purva Mama 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 is so adamant. Uh, anyway, uh, now the only only one question is that when I feel I am there, I am existing. That is. uh it's an experience i am there then i i can feel that the world is existing so that is a result of my feeling that i am existing when i feel that i i do exist i also feel that the world also exists why this uh, so that is a karma or that is a phala only no this is my question the very fact the statement that i when i feel i exist is an experience that itself indicates that we are far away from the existence existence when it is an experience is no more an existence it is existence of something we do that we exist but our existence is associated with the associations such as my body my height my name my fame my yasha kirti satta sampatti pratishta relations etc it is impossible for us at the moment to exp- to have the anubhut of i exist and full stop our i exist is always punctuated with some associ this association is the result of the umpteen number of samskaras operating through vasanas on us unless there is complete vasana kshaya pure existence by itself and pure existence since it cannot be associated with anything it cannot be experienced that which is experienced is always external to me pure 
not external to me it is called sva samvedya gnaneshwar as while starting his gnaneshwari has used a shloka in which says om namo ji adya he is pointing to brahma om namo ji adya jaya jaya sva samvedya sva samvedyata means the existence knows that existence is existing it may appear little jargonish existence knows that existence is existing so that means nature is existence that is why i said it is almost impossible for us to imagine astitva or exist pure form because with the kind of buddhi that we have we shall always have association with the existence that is why it is a mandate of a buddhi which has reached a stage called rutambhara buddhi where the pragna has crossed the boundaries where the antakaran has crossed the boundaries and the kutastha only is operating chidabhas has no more functioning in technical terms in other words only at the highest level of a sampradnyat samadhi shuddha astitva can be ascertained the moment it is ascertained that is the kshanam of brahma jnana brahma vid brahmeva bhavati because brahma vid means he came to know and he became hari hari thank you thank you hari om sanjay ji bhavan yes क्रिएशन cannot be related to this statement when we say andi and pindi what we are trying to say is vyashti samashti relationship the vikar as a vyashti the vikaras are operating even at the samashti level mm-hmm. so that imagine in swami vivekananda's words one physical body gives us happiness two physical bodies will give two happiness three pretty will give three and all human bodies put together which is called virad purush or virata purush shall have the feeling of one continuous body of the entire creation similarly combined mind of all the minds of the creation shall make it a hiranya garbha yes. which is swaraja swarupa so that is why this is within the creation asti jayate all the shad vikaras are within the creation the astit we are talking is beyond the creation it does exist in the creation also but its existence which is beyond time and space does not have any of these vikaras because it is prakruti transcending okay. it is a that is why this is not applicable at the astitva of that kind hari hari uh, one more question uh, just pardon my ignorance bhagavad gita will be considered into the भगवद गीता इज द कल्मिनेशन ऑफ द उपनिषद एज द एक्शन पोटेंशियल सो इट इज इट डज कैरी पार्ट ऑफ पूर्व मीमांसा बिकॉज भगवद गीता इज वन कंप्लीट कॉम्पेंडियम विच गिवज ए नॉर्मल ऑर्डिनरी मॉर्टल टू रीच द हाइएस्ट लेवल दैट बींग सो इट डज इंक्लूड पूर्व मीमांसा it does include sankhya tatva gyan it does include yoga it does include nyaya it does include vaisheshika also that is because whatever is based in all the shad darshanas and the shruti has been taken together so that depending upon the adhikari bhagavad gita knew that a dumb person will be reading it and the highest person will be reading it accordingly all the advices are incorporated in one that is why it is called one of the rare scripture in the world are you so just to add to that that uh, the shloka in chapter 3 in ninth verses yagnyarth karmano anyatra lokoyam karm bandhana does not that also resolve this issue of the karma itself because lord is saying 
Nash Karma. He's basically saying it. Nyarth Karma. Lord is talking about Nash Karma Siddhi. Yes. About Karma Falatyaga. At this, in the same breath, Lord is talking about Yadnya Tapad Jnana Na Tyajet. Bhagavad Gita is not easy to understand. Yes. Lord is Karma Mchara. And then Lord is saying that Sarva Dharma Tyaja. Sarva Dharma and Parityaja. So that depends upon the Adhikari. Each Adhikari has been given an advice. Yes. So, the Adhikari, Tamasik, Rajasik, Sattvik, different advices are there. Depending upon the stage, that is why when it came to Sanyasa and Tyaga, the entire 18th Adhyaya starts with Tyaga and focuses on Karma Phala Tyaga. But mm -hmm. about the Yoga, it talks in the second Karma Sanyasi Yoga. So that mm -hmm. is why who has reached at a Sanyasi level, there is a different advice there. One which is still at the Karma Phala level, Karma Phala Tyaga or Naishkarma Siddhi's advice to him. One is for Bhoktrutva Bhranti Vinasha. One is for Kartrutva Bhranti Vinasha. So that is the reason why everyone finds Bhagavad Gita appealing and helping them in moving forward. So it's a very curious mixture of advices available for all the types of Nara or the human beings that have so far come on this earth and that will be coming also in future. The solution will always be there. Hari you. Hari Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hari Any more questions? Uh, Sanjay ji, if uh, nobody is there, I have a question. Little funny question. Uh, if uh, the here in we use this example of dream to analyze that this existence is an appearance, it is very easy to understand. But uh, can we or why are we not able to sit in the dream and use this example of this Jagrat Avastha? The fact that we are in the Brahma, as a, as in as as they uh, described in Sankshepa Sharirik, one book, that Brahma is sitting in our hand like a gooseberry. However, we are not aware of it. So the awareness is brought by the Shastra, but opening of the fist and seeing the gooseberry is our own function. So the reason why we are not able to know, even after hearing every day in the satsang that I am Brahma, still it doesn't make any difference to me. And that is the reason that which doesn't make you feel that you are in that avastha is the presence of Adnyana. The very nature of Avidya, as described by Patanjali Maharaj, is Anitya Ashuchi Dukkha Rupa you think as nitya, shuchi and sukha rupa. That is the problem. Even now, you and me both believe in one thing that when we get our baby boy is born, we are happy. We don't realize it is a dukkha karana. Even now, when we get an increment, we feel happy. We don't realize that it is dukkha karana. Sarvam evam dukkham. This we don't realize. And this we don't realize because the thick curtain of Mahamaya in the form of avidya has enveloped us so badly that this doesn't penetrate at all, even at an intellectual level also. That is the beauty. That is why Kabir Maharaj says, Maya Maha Thagini Hamajani. She is the witch of all. She will never let you know your own nature. That is the reason why we have to follow all this so that we overcome that Maya. And the best part of the Avidya or Maya is she only helps us to get out of her own control, provided you struggle for it, which is called sadhana. Hariyo. Hariyo. Any more questions? I have a question. Mala is here. Uh, Dr. Saib, I've heard uh, Sawal Kate explaining in her Tashopanishad that while Upanishads predominantly speak about karma, and very small portion of it speaks about jnana. Uh, the prime reason for this apparently is also that because most of us are adhikari of karma, and there are only few who are have this adhikar of jnana. 
uh, hence probably you know vedanga speaks largely about karma kanda and very less about gnana kanda this is one and second is um, the entire creation appears on a small ausha of brahma uh, and jiva is a part of this creation so with our santa buddhi it is uh, very difficult to analyze or understand or come to an experience of the entire brahma of which actually the entire creation only is a small part um so just wanted to you know share this uh, if you can throw more light or, or talk more that it right because there are not many phd students in an university but in a primary school there are many many thousand students majority of us are at the karma kanda level only because we are full of adharma or papam so that is why majority of the people that is why if you see government makes the budget for health they spend maximum money on tuberculosis and malaria because that is what is affecting maximum the population and the funds allocated for neuro neurological diseases is very small because the percentage is very small similarly the karma kanda has completely engulfed the shruti and the small part is left for those rare souls who only take a cue from there and move forward so that is correct as you said and second is yes till the jeeva is in jeeva dasha it is impossible for him to understand even his own nature or even the world itself that is why the only way to understand the brahman or the creation first as the creation and the ishvara and then beyond that the brahman is only to break the barriers of the santata or the limitation of the jiva and the way to break the barrier is precisely all these the paths that have been told to us karma yoga gnana yoga bhakti yoga and rajamarga all the four are doing essentially the same thing they break the barriers of limitations of a santa jiva and make the buddhi arise and reach to a level of pragna so that it transcends the creation and then destroy the buddhi and merge with the brahman hari om